I started studying medicine uh, just from my experiences. It's like I'm now a pro, a champion at medicine, when in fact I'm an accountant, but I've got a good knowledge of medicine. So. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my life experiences. My name is Wezi Nyaniwa Sosola, your usual host. And as you have seen, today I'm taking this episode from the car. In fact, I had planned to take a video this weekend. I even made an update on my community tab. And today, I'm dropping my son at church for a Christmas play rehearsal. And I'll be waiting for him for two hours until when he finishes this rehearsal. And I said, what better time, what better place to do it than right here, right now. I might have easily gone back home and come back, but in Malawi right now, there is a lot of construction work, especially on the roads. A lot of roads are being dug up, they are being constructed, and uh, you literally cannot go anywhere without passing through a dug up road. So it's like they are digging up roads all over the place, they are constructing roads all over the place, there is a lot of dust, there is a lot of bumps, there is a too much congestion going on on the roads. It's taking a lot of time and a lot of, uh, it's bringing some convenience traveling to and from uh, whichever place you want to go. That's why I said instead of making um, so many trips, let me just uh, make one round trip to church and back. Uh, I might have as well just wait for that two hours. And while doing that, let me take uh, make this video. That's why I'm here, friends, uh, making this video. And another thing is that uh, it's summer, this part of the world, um, and it's it's really hot. It's very hot. Um, right now, here in Ilongwe today, at, at this time, it's 30 degrees Celsius, as I'm speaking, which is very hot. And the driving on the roads in this heat, so inconvenient. It's very inconvenient. That's why I'll just wait for these two hours. So let's get at it i would like to talk about insomnia today if you don't know what insomnia is it's just lack of sleep sleeplessness it's a problem it's a challenge there are a lot of people i've just googled i once googled insomnia i got results a lot of people are asking questions about this i never really knew <coughs> i didn't know that too many people are struggling with insomnia but when I started having this challenge, when I googled it, I noticed that there are so many people in life who are struggling with insomnia, we are struggling with the sleeplessness. And if you are able to go to bed and sleep right away, thank God for that. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. A lot of people are struggling going to sleep. I, I, I for one, I had this problem for a long time, for years in fact years more than five years struggling with insomnia it used to cause a lot of exhaustion disruption to my work life disruption to my uh, to my family life i i would get so exhausted at work i would get so exhausted at home i would literally i remember one time i told my husband that we need to to, to change the the lights from the house because we had this white light bright white light then i said let's change lights throughout the house it should be warm red light so we removed all the lights we exchanged it with the warm lights so that in case i may get some relief because i read somewhere that warm light is much uh, better for sleep so we changed the whole house but the situation did not improve did not change and another thing is that i even stopped watching television um i would just watch it here and there because i observed that once i sit on the television the next thing i would literally feel that my head has locked and i would know that tonight i'm not sleeping because i could literally feel that the, the head has locked it has locked and sleep is not coming I, I would perceive it whenever i'm on a screen watching it, it will just lock up and I would know that today I'm not sleeping because my head has just looked up. If, if, if you haven't experienced it, really, you can't know what I'm talking about. But I would really sense it that today I'm not sleeping. The head has locked up and um, 
I would go to sleep just hoping that in case, but I would see that uh, time is ticking by, the clock is ticking, and the next thing I realize it's in the morning, I go bath, going to work, or doing my usual home duties, um, and what have you. And it kept happening for a long time, for a long, long, long time. And when I talk about not sleeping, I mean the whole night, the clock ticking by without any drop of sleep. Day is no end. Day after day after day, no sleeping. Maybe in a week I'll just sleep once or twice, but five days out of the week, no sleep at all. I mean, at all, no sleep at all. The whole night, no sleep. Maybe you may be thinking that I was dozing off. No dozing, literally no sleep, no sleep. So I once went to the hospital I explained this to the doctor and as usual his first point of call was like what are you stressed about what are you thinking about I said I I'm not stressed about anything I'm not uh, what do you do at night when you are asleep I'm not really overthinking I'm stressed just as any normal person but not to the point that it would affect my daily life because I'm able to control that aspect of my life so I knew that it wasn't because of stress or depression or what but for the doctors, that was the first point of call. So I told them, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having uh, any stress. Then gave me uh, some sleeping pills. I took them for some days. But what was happening with this sleeping pill, whenever I take it, I would fall asleep. But when I wake up, I wouldn't feel rested. You know how when you sleep, you feel well rested. The next day, you take it with the, I mean, with a bang just because you've rested but in my case i wasn't w w resting this it's like the sleeping pill would just knock me out but i wouldn't feel rested after taking it for a number of days i said ah, let me just stop because i don't want in the long run to develop dependency on these sleeping pills i want to find the root cause of this problem why am i not sleeping so i stopped that I went to another doctor he made some tests for me uh, a number of tests a number of tests they all came back um, very well I wasn't sick I wasn't and it was just quite wondering what is happening with you um, all the indicators in your body um, they are they're okay uh, apart from in fact that the fact that I had a low blood because I'm usually having um, low hemoglobin levels so Apart from the fact that I had low hemoglobin levels, there was no other alarming factor um, in my test results. So I, get, I went back, I continued staying with this um, challenge, no solution. After a while, I went to another doctor. The moment I got into the doctor's room, I told him, I'm not sleeping. And he went to the door, he closed the door, and he asked me, what challenges are you having with your husband? Are you having any family problems? Are you having any challenges? How is your relationship with your husband at home? He was just trying to give me a counseling session, which is good, which is good. But for me, it, it, it wasn't applicable because, as I've said, the insomnia that I was having, the cause was not stress. The cause was not family challenges and I told him that I'm not having any family challenges of course sometimes I do disagree with my husband just like any other couple disagrees at times we would disagree we would quarrel but later on we would make up and um, everything would be okay so my family life was just quite normal maybe better than the average family so it was okay it wasn't what was causing me sleeplessness then he asked me, what are you doing when you are awake at, at, at night? Are you, what are you thinking about? Then I said, I try my best not to be thinking about all of things. Maybe I just put songs in my head. I sing the songs. I try maybe just to blank my head out. And not, it's not like I'm overthinking about something. I'm not overthinking about money issues. I'm not overthinking about my husband. I'm not overthinking about work. I'm not overthinking any of that. I'm just laying down, just trying to sleep, maybe praying in my head, maybe singing songs to pass time, just doing those sort of things. Then time would tick, it would, morning would come. 
every day it was like that sleeplessness then the doctor also again recommended some sleeping pills but it wasn't coming to the bottom of my problem i wanted to know the root cause what was causing my sleeplessness i went out of the doctor's room i never took um the sleeping pills i just left it there years went by i did not want to develop dependency believe me i didn't want to uh, to develop dependence okay as i've said it's it's very hot let me open um the door so it's like i never wanted to develop dependency on these sleeping pills that's why i was not really taking it um i would take it once in a while just because i want to rest after um, a long period of uh, sleeplessness yeah but i wasn't taking it consistently i didn't want to develop dependency what i wanted was to find and identify the root cause of the insomnia i once went to when i was at church they made an altar call i went in front they prayed for me i told the pastor um i'm not sleeping i'm having insomnia they prayed for me uh, i went back home the problem did not resolve i still struggled with the sleeplessness then this other day i i tried to go to another doctor again then when i went to this doctor the moment i told her my challenges i'm not sleeping again the doctor's first point of call what are you thinking about you are stressed and i said no i'm not stressed it's not stress it's not depression then she said oh maybe you're overthinking i know you're overthinking and it's like the doctor was literally trying to force my that decision on me that you're overthinking when i literally i knew, know that i'm not overthinking i explained to her quite well i'm in control of my thoughts i'm in control of, of my emotions i'm in control of myself it, this is not stress please diagnose me with something else otherwise we are going the wrong route it's, i'm not stressed up let me just say this you know when a patient goes to a doctor sometimes you have to trust your patients for medical personnel don't force an idea on them don't force a diagnosis that it, it would not it's just coming from an opinion you, you need to have the diagnosis from actual facts actual results from the patient's body because it's like this lady was forcing this this on me that you are stressed you are stressed that you can't just be you are stressed and i was like no I, i'm not sleeping but it's not coming from stress please help me we need to get to the root of this i let her speak she spoke for some time i listened to her and i knew that i'm not again getting any help from here after he had finished i humbly requested her that uh, doctor can you please give me a referral to a bloody doctor a hematologist i would like to meet a hematologist then the doctor said why do you want to meet a hematologist they said no i, I just want somebody to help me figure out the root cause of this problem then said ah, but i know i've told you okay thank you so much but still i want to come to facts i want to come up with facts that this is really the cause so let me investigate my blood problem so um, she did give me a referral letter because you wouldn't visit a an a, a, a specialist doctor because this one was a hematologist a blood specialist doctor you can't visit a specialist doctor on my medical aid without a referral from a general doctor so this one was a general doctor she wrote this referral for me i went to the blood doctor she took he took my blood he we went to the lab they tested the blood in fact we had to send the blood over to south africa because the laboratories here in malawi could not do the exact tests that this blood doctor wanted to perform on my blood finally the results came back from the south african lab after some two weeks or so it came back then my doctor this is the hematologist he looked at the blood and he told me that look everything in your blood seems to be normal all the indicators they are normal there is no cause for alarm apart from the fact that your hemoglobin seems to be very low your for a woman your hemoglobin levels are very low your iron is low it means you are losing somewhere 
you keep on losing somewhere but obviously this is not an internal loss because if it were an internal loss who would know it would show by now from your history because you started having the challenge of low blood levels a long time ago we would know that you're having an internal loss by now but it should be another cause go to a gynecologist consult i it's it appears that maybe you are losing a lot on a monthly basis through your monthly cycle so just go to a hematologist for consultation I said okay thank you doctor i never thought of it that way then i went to the gynecologist uh, for another diagnosis on the low blood that is another story for another time but i was put on iron supplements which i kept on taking iron supplements but still the problem of sleeplessness the problem of insomnia never resolved then i said to myself let me now go to an eye doctor the eye doctor should look at my eye maybe i'm taking too much light because of that maybe the light is causing some problems in my brain and it causing me not to sleep so i went and i visited an eye specialist an ophthalmologist <laughs> I'm telling you, I've met so many specialists in my life. So many specialists, doctors. <laughs> now from a hematologist to a gynecologist to an ophthalmologist. <laughs> I started studying medicine uh, just from my experiences. It's like I'm now a pro, a champion at medicine, when in fact I'm an accountant, but I've got a good knowledge of medicine. So... I told my, the ophthalmologist my challenge. Look, doctor, I'm not sleeping. I'm, I'm, I'm for years now. I haven't slept. I mean, maybe I just sleep once a week or twice a week. But the other days, the night goes by without a, a, an ounce of sleep, without a dot of sleep. I'm so exhausted. And can you help me? Look at my eyes. I've gone to different doctors. And this eye doctor, when I presented my problems to him, okay, he said, okay, he, he made a test to my eyes. He looked at the back of my eyes. He looked everywhere. And he told me that your eyes look okay. Your eyes look okay. What I want to do is to send you to the X-ray department. They need, you need to do an MRI. <laughs> You need to do an MRI, they should scan your brain in case there is something in your brain. Then I went there, they scanned my brain, I brought, took my results back to the ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist told me that, you look, I've looked at your, the back of your eyes, I've looked at everything in your eye, your eye is normal. And I've also looked at your results from the x-ray department. Um, your, your radiology uh, results uh no more there's nothing wrong with your brain everything looks okay then i said doctor then what is the problem that i'm having please help me because i want to come to the root of this problem i'm not sleeping there should be a problem in my life that i'm not aware of but i want a diagnosis on this problem because obviously i've already ruled out a depression i've already ruled out stress as i've said i'm in control of my my problems I'm, I'm not i'm in control of my thoughts i'm not the type of person who overthinks on issues i'm not the kind of problem who on overthinks on my troubles because i'm a christian and i know where to take those troubles to so i don't overthink i, I it's not stress it's not depression can you doctor help me to get to the root cause of this what is it because i've gone everywhere and i'm not finding the hope that i need then a pertinent question this particular doctor asked me one point one point changed my outlook on my problem forever it changed the outlook on the challenges it opened my eyes i had a new understanding and imagine this was an ophthalmologist an eye doctor but he's the one who really came close to the answer that I was looking for. An eye doctor. After I had sat down, I said, doctor, please, what could be the challenge that I'm facing? Then he just asked me, do you have kids? Then I said, yes, I have kids. Can you tell me how was your birth 
experience because a lot of women during childbirth they lose a lot of blood and due to this loss of blood it's like it affects the supply of oxygen it's like the body starts to shut down because it affects the supply of oxygen because the blood is low there's too much loss then a supply of oxygen to the brain is affected and some nerves get damaged in the process because they're not getting supplied with enough oxygen so it's a challenge that women face sometimes because of the uh, childbirth process that was it for me this doctor had answered my problem because as i've referred to you in, in in my earlier episodes about my birth experiences there was a time actually in fact all my birth stories had been so traumatic all my birth experiences had been so traumatic and the especially this one that i had just mentioned in my other episode okay where i also said i lost a lot of blood i lost too much blood to the point that really when i i was like what is going on i was i was feeling faint i was feeling as if i would be fainting there was too much loss of blood in that particular birth experience and when the doctor the ophthalmologist told me that it's because of childbirth could have affected your nerves in the brain and maybe some nerves that causes a sleep I just said you have answered my, my 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 problem this is it then i said then what should i do i said okay if you are taking iron supplements keep on taking those iron supplements you need to have enough supply of oxygen to the brain and in time those nerves will heal themselves they will be healing but i can't tell you that you take this medication they will heal but in with time it's like they'll be regenerating and healing themselves and if that is the challenge that you are facing it is going to resolve itself with the time when your nerves start healing. Amen. It's like this doctor, ophthalmologist, thank you, doctor. He had answered my problems. He had told me the root cause, and I believed him. Because I never told him about my, my birth challenges. He just brought up his, the issue himself, saying that, do you have children? Tell me how was your birth process. A lot of women, when they give birth, they lose a lot of blood. It affects the supply of oxygen to the brain, and it damages some nerves. And it could be that for you, some nerves that deals with the sleep were damaged. But just wait for some time. These nerves, perhaps, if that's the challenge, will heal themselves. <coughs> I took it. I took that word. I thank God for him. I went back home. I was just staying with my challenge. But it happened one time. It happened one time. I just noticed. I didn't know how. But I just noticed that I've started sleeping. The challenge had gone. And in fact, it's my husband who noticed that, hey, I, I'm seeing that you are sleeping these days. And I said, yes, I am sleeping. What, what has happened? I don't know. I don't know what has happened. I haven't taken any medication. I haven't um, done anything, but I've started sleeping. I don't know the solution to this. Then thinking back, I just knew that that doctor was right when he said, they will regenerate, the nerves will heal themselves after a while. Just wait, just be patient. That was it. I got my healing just that way. But to me, when I look at that experience, I see it to be a miracle. When I look at the whole insomnia thing and the way it was resolved, it was a miracle for me in my life. Because I never saw an end to this problem. After years, I never really saw an end to the problem. I thought I would do my whole life, I'll be staying with that. Actually, it was affecting my heart because my heart was not resting. So because my heart was not resting, sometimes I could feel pain. I could, I could actually feel that my heart was beating so fast. It was overworking because of lack of sleep. So it was affecting me physiologically. It was affecting me. But I thank God because a miracle happened and the time I come, I don't know what, but it went. I started sleeping. And right now, I can comfortably tell you 
that I'm sleeping very well. I'm sleeping very well and I'm well rested every time I wake up. Every time I wake up. Oh, I want to encourage somebody. Maybe you are facing this type of challenge of insomnia. I just want to encourage you. My problem was resolved. Now I can sleep very well. I can rest very well. I can go to my work. I'm, I'm productive at my home. I can do all that. Or those I can multitask as a woman, as a, um, a homemaker. I can multitask as a, a working lady. I can do all that. And I'm well rested. I feel good. My life is good. And I just want to assure somebody today that every challenge has got an expiry date. Every problem has got an expiry date. If you are struggling with this problem of insomnia, just know that it's got an expiry date. You are passing through this season. Don't lose hope in this season because an end to your problem is going to come. Just take a look maybe at your lifestyle. Maybe there are a few things, one or two things that you want you like to change about your lifestyle. Just look at your maybe use of gadgets. Just to take a look at maybe um, uh, your stress level. Just take a look at all these things. For mine was loss of blood that I think affected my nerves. I haven't really come to the root cause of my problem, but I truly believe that it's because of childbirth experience that loss that's what i'm thinking but it ultimately came to an end that's the point that i would like to make it's gonna resolve it's gonna sort itself out be confident in that i just want to leave you with the word of god the word of god says that cast your burdens on me Cast your burdens on the Lord and he's going to take care of it. Don't take it all by yourself. Cast your bed. He's got broader shoulders to carry your burdens on. The shoulders are so broad. God's shoulders are broad and it can carry whatever problem that is on earth. Cast it on him and he's going to give you peace. As you are passing through this season, what you need most is his peace. You are facing challenges with sleep, yes, I know. But you need the peace of mind to say that I'm passing through this, but I want, Lord, pass through this with me. Take, take me through this with you. I want to rest on your shoulders. So that's what I want to encourage somebody today, that just to trust in the Lord to carry these problems for you. Don't just carry it for yourself because it's going to be heavy for you. And you may end up doing um, a decision that you would regret in the end. But if you put your challenges on the Lord's shoulders, he's broad enough to carry all those burdens and give you peace of mind. That's what is required for you. In whatever situation that you are going through, if you put your burdens on him, he carries those for you. Just come to him in prayer and say, Lord, I'm tired of carrying this on my own. May you please carry it for me. And this God is just waiting for you, for your voice to prompt him. And he's going to do it for you. Because what you're, seeking, you're lacking right now is peace of mind. And when he carries that, you have peace of mind. Psalm 55 verse 22. That's the verse that I would like to close with. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. Give your burdens to the Lord. He will take care of you. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.